Hey everyone, it's Callum Brower from RacerX, back again with another race examination video. We're going to look back at a couple things from the St. Louis Triple Crown. I want to start off by talking about Chase Sexton's hole shot in the first main event because he nearly timed the gate. I think uh, we, I did a little bit of slow motion feedback from the broadcast and it's tough to see, but I'm pretty sure that he just barely actually timed the gate. And look at the distance he has on everybody else coming down the start straight right here, almost a full uh, bike length on everybody before they even get to where they cross the start straight. But I also want to highlight uh, Tomac and Barsha coming into this first corner because uh, Tomac late on the brakes right here is not something that we used to see him do. If he had people on either side of him, he used to back out of the challenge before everybody and just kind of let you know the first turn stuff happen as they be. But this year, Tomac's been later on the brakes, and it's helped him get good starts. Not the best start here, but still, I think that's a catalyst to why he's getting better starts this year. Later on in the first main event, though, Dean Wilson goes down heavily on the left-hand side of the whoops here. And uh, he actually took a foot peg uh, to the rear end right there and had a, a very big laceration. Said he was laying on the ground and, and uh, realized he was in a pool of blood. Here's a back view we got from our guy Tom Jernet there. Uh, filming Wilson coming through the whoops and as we slow this down again you can see he's just kind of rodeoing a little bit um, I think he actually missed a whoop and started hooking left and uh, as he goes into the wall right here just kind of bam right there the foot peg goes right into his butt uh, big laceration had a few surgeries but man I'll tell you what I think this actually could have been a little bit worse of a scenario for him overall and I wanted to slow this down again look at his foot right here it's going to get wedged between the finish structure and his bike and it was I mean that's really close to you know you could have like shattered the foot or tore his knee up or something along those lines so yes the uh, the laceration that he got in his butt is obviously very bad and, and he's had many surgeries to try to fix it, but ultimately that will heal. Uh, the knee injury that could have come from this would have been really bad as well. So kind of fortunate in that regard, unfortunate as well. Here's what he had to say about it all. I went for two operations that night. Um, and then I have another operation tomorrow. So kind of a weird injury, never had it before. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it sucks big time, but I just want to give a massive thank you to everybody that's reached out. So Dean gave us that update on uh, Monday and he has had that third surgery already looking uh, to fully recover from this injury in the end. All right. So let's talk about Malcolm Stewart's crash in the second main event here as he goes down, uh, kind of battling in the mid pack there a little bit. And initially this looked really bad because he was very slow to get up, uh, holding his knee and then gingerly walking back to the bike. He would actually get back on and do some laps after this, but we all thought, oh man, maybe it's a knee injury. But uh, what they actually told us and, and what you can see pretty obviously right here is that as he gets sideways and goes down right here off the Suzuki tough block, if we zero in on his knee, his knee's actually going to get stuck by the handlebar. Uh, the handlebar grabbed onto his knee brace through the uh, cloth of the seven gear there. And you can see that like his foot is even dragged back down to the bike after he goes down again. Uh, so ultimately, this ended up just being kind of a stinger for Stewart. Uh you know, he was able to go back out in the third main event. He was still kind of riding safe and cautious, just making sure his knee was good. But man, that could have been a whole lot worse, similar to the Dean situation, where again, these knee injuries are always a little bit bad for these guys to deal with. And uh, Malcolm, very close to having one right there. Fortunately, all good in the end. The big winner on the night, though, of course, Marvin Muskan, his 10th career main event victory. And this is just really good to see. Uh, if this is Marvin's last year, which we don't believe it will be, but if it is, just to get another race victory notched off there. Uh, happy for him and his wife and his trainer, David Villeman, right there. Good guy, and uh, cool to see Marv back on the top step of the podium. I want to remind everybody that this video is presented by Onyx Off-Road. Know where to go with the number one off-road GPS app. Access 500,000 plus miles of trails and roads, open dates, and public lands. Download the Onyx Off-Road app today. All right, moving on to the 250 class, we have to talk about the Pierce Brown situation because a lot of people are very frustrated with what ended up happening in the second race. So if we go back to the very first race, uh, you're going to see Josh Voorhees go over the bars coming under the tunnel jump right here. Brown kind of runs into him. We believe it damaged his shifter or something down there uh, with the engine casing or something along those lines. So he has to withdraw from the first race. Goes back out for the second race. Same thing ends up happening or something along those lines. Not really sure of the situation here, but you can see the mechanic going to work on the bike. Eventually has to withdraw from the second race as well. So you can see right Right here brown and the mechanic both are going to exit the stadium brown uh on his own power the mechanic pushing the bike up the tunnel then the red flag is displayed for kyle peters who went down suddenly brown comes back out of the tunnel trying to restart this second race but he's on the spare bike you're allowed to tech two bikes for these triple crown races because in the event of a mechanical failure or something in race two for example they have a spare bike that they can jump on for race three when there's limited amounts of time john starling of the ama comes over though while the second race is getting ready to restart and says nope you're done 
for not allowing you to restart this second race. And people were confused as to why. So if we go to the Supercross rulebook 4.24F says a motorcycle that has left the stadium floor or infield of a speedway uh, during a race is barred from any subsequent restart. So that is why Brown was not able to restart this race, barring any situation with the tech second bike or anything like that. He left the stadium floor. He will not be able to restart this race. Now, people were complaining because they're like, why did McAdoo, who brought out the red flag in Atlanta last year, get to restart the race? If we go down to G, it says riders who are unable to remove themselves from an incident area under their own power and or demonstrate behavior requiring medical attention, causing any session to be red flagged, may not resume any on-track activity until cleared by the chief medical officer as medically fit to compete. That is what happened with McAdoo last year. He went to the chief medical officer before the restart in Atlanta and they checked him out. They said he was good to go. That is why he was allowed to restart. So people were up in arms saying like, well, how come McAdoo can cause a red flag and still restart the race? But Brown, who didn't cause it, can't come out with his second tech bike and restart the race. You can complain all day long about whether this rule makes sense or should exist. But within the rules themselves, this was simply just the AMA trying to follow the rules that they have already laid out in the rule book, which everybody reads and everybody signs off on. So that is why Brown was not allowed to start that second race. No, it's a little bit confusing, but that's what happened. Brown would come back out for the third main event and actually was leading it for a little while there, but eventually would tuck the front end and go down, allowing RJ Hampshire back through into the race lead. Just a little small tip over there, but I kind of wanted to break this down in slow motion again just to highlight just how, you know, something so small can be a huge mistake. But Brown's trying to go for this little kind of loamy rut to the outside. He's starting to push the front end already, and the front end just barely kind of misses that loamy spot he was going for, pushes the front end into the ground, and uh, down he goes. But Brown would actually become part of a little bit of a battle for the podium later on in the night. Obviously, his chances were already ruined for a podium. But right here, we got Kyle Chisholm in third, uh, Brown in fourth, and Mitchell Oldenburg in fifth. Now, uh, Chisholm is actually third overall as they run right here, but Oldenburg is trying to go in for third overall and he has to get around Brown to do it. So he's going to put Brown on the ground. And again, just a wild up and down night for Pierce Brown ended up getting involved in the podium battle and eventually would go on to finish sixth in this main event. Jet Lawrence though, early on in this third race though, is going to go down on the back wheel of Jay Stone right there. Owen just got a little bit sideways in the whoops and Lawrence went down. Uh, not what, uh, the championship leader wanted. And fortunately for him, he was not injured because he actually augured into the ground pretty hard right there but from this point on he just got up and tried to kind of pick guys off as best as he could it really didn't seem like he had any sense of urgency obviously he's got a big championship lead now with Cameron McAdoo injured in press day on Friday so he wasn't it seemed like maybe overly trying to make uh, too many passes uh, did end up getting into a good position uh, to still finish up second overall on the night but the big winner would be RJ Hampshire for the first time in his career He's going to come through, pick up this final race victory, and it's enough to get him the overall victory in the Triple Crown. This is such a cool moment as well because Hampshire has been through so many different situations and injuries and stuff like that. So for him to finally get this one knocked off the list, uh, maybe some momentum builds for RJ Hampshire. And now we got the East West Showdown to get excited for coming up this weekend in Atlanta.